Hi, this is Lisa and welcome to my channel. Today we're going to finish off this Meadowbrook cart from part one. I just want to make a comment. With the fenders, if you glue them on, then you won't be able to open the seat. Now the option is to leave the fenders off uh, or to sticky wax them on. So it's your choice. So I'm just going to leave that off for the pictures. The other thing I want to note is how it fits different models. Here you can see it with a Giselle model. And let's put in a True North. You can see with him, it would probably have to be a little bigger, especially the shafts. Bigger wheels would help with this one as well. See another model, the same with this uh, Cleveland Bay here. If you made it just a little larger and larger wheels, it would work for him. And we have a big boy Belgian going in here that actually works quite well with him. Again, if you can find bigger wheels, that would be a plus. Uh, we have a Dundee here. He's got a big butt. You can see with Dundee, there's the problem with his tail. So that may not be a great model for driving. And we have an Echidus, which actually works quite well. And I have a stone palouse to show you. doable with some adjustments. And one more model without breaking anything here. Could be an exercise cart for him, Hamilton. So let's make the cart. Next we're going to cut two inside back pieces from a piece of soft balsa wood. Now the reason it's going to be soft is because we're going to indent something into this. I have one right and one left side. And using the marker lines from the pattern, I'm just going to mark those lines right there and the same on the other side. Next, on the top side, I'm going to take my rod and just at the part, I'm going to push that in and make an indent like that. In as far as you can, and then stain these two pieces. Take these little rods out and paint them whatever the color is you're using, which for me is black or if you're using brass, then you're good to go. A good way of painting these is just to jam them into the, a piece of foam or a piece of wood. To assemble the seats, take a piece of extra wood and with the back side up, this is the one with the little lines, and with this facing down, take two rods, push them in and center them on the back and glue them as shown. I use something hard like the steel ruler to push that in just a little extra and make sure they're well set. Try to get your right and left side as even as possible and make sure that they are separate sides. Once these are dry, we're gonna glue these in. Now, on a real Meadowbrook, this would be hinged, but it's just too dainty and it would break. So I'm going to take these and glue them to the inside of the seat, like that. Once this has had plenty of time to dry, you could bend these slightly just to make sure it's level across, and then glue in your seat cushions. Now, if you're deciding what doll to use, this cart is really made to fit 
a Brayer traditional female doll. And I've got a small head one and a larger head one. And their feet fit fine in that. However, if you want to fit a smaller doll, what you would need to do is put a tow rail in. And that's what they do with the real horses. So that you could have it sitting like this for her to drive comfortably. So if you want to do a tow rail, take either a piece of metal or brass, either the rods, and then bend them to fit to the right size. So you bend an edge and bend an edge and just glue it on there. And paint it, in my case, black. And you can just put it on one side. So if I want her to sit on the one side, I would just make that for the one side. Here is an example of a piece that I bent and then I would paint that black and I would put it on the side that I wanted the short rider to be on, or short driver, so it would go there. Say I have the full-size ride driver on this side and a passenger here, that would allow them to take a child with them. Next, we're gonna work on the single tree and crossbar section. Take a piece of eight millimeter, by, eight millimeter by eight millimeter balsa wood, the same that you use for the shafts, and cut it the same length to go across from side to side. I have a piece of barbecue dowel. You can't use balsa wood, it's not strong enough, but this is approximately a quarter inch diameter, and I'm gonna cut that to length is 85 millimeters. Mark the center of both of these pieces. To get the started, poke a little hole with something in the middle of each of those, because we're gonna be drilling right down the center of them. Next, you're gonna drill holes carefully in both those pieces. My husband's a wonderful help with these things for me. Before I go any further, I'm just making sure my screw fits in this. Here, we're using a very small drill bit and just moving it back and forth to create a bit of a slot. I have two of these little Rio Rondo hooks. What I'm gonna do is open it up a little bit, just making it a little bit up a bit. And then I wanna fit that into these ends and the hook will be pointing to the back. So when we put these in, and I'm finding this tool helps to get it in there, you're going to have them both pacing the back, like that. And I'm going to glue those in. Next, I'm going to take a little bit of tape, wrap it around the ends, and I'm going to spray paint these black because I want it to match the rest of my cart. You can take whatever color you want or leave them as is. Once that's painted, I'm going to take these out and stain these two pieces. If you don't want to paint these, you can always just use a Sharpie on them. And I'm also going to do that on top of my little bolt. Take your bolt and put it through, through this round piece. You may have to use a screwdriver to screw that in. Make sure it's running straight up and down. Put it all the way through. This is why you can't use the balsa wood on this or it would split. Next, thread a washer onto the screw and put that into the next hole. Be very careful not to split the wood when you're doing this. Now, I said you use a three quarter inch screw, but mine was one inch, so I ended up having to cut it. 
So now I have a little room there. It moves back and forth. Take a small piece of electrical tape. And we're gonna thin that down by cutting it in half. Then on the single tree section, take your tape out there, wrap that around. Do the same on the other side. Make it even. Cut some leather lace and thin it as much as you can with some sandpaper or stive it in whatever way you choose. You want that to be fairly thin. And that's going to hold the single tree so that it doesn't move back and forth. And what that's used for is in case something breaks, it stops it from going like that and hitting the horse. The front buckboard right there offers protection, is optional. However, we're gonna make one. And to do that, take the pattern and cut it out of a piece of balsa wood. If you look online, there's all sorts of designs you can use for that front board. Now that you've got the basic piece, you can carve in ends or rounding or whatever you want to make a design for your front board. I stuck with a fairly simple design, just straight there and rounded on the top, and I'm gonna stain that. Cut two pieces of one and a half inch length of the brass half in, a quarter inch strip and bend them so that when these attach to the cart, the buckboard is vertical. Then glue them onto the buckboard like that, and then buck glue them onto the cart. Next, take the book buckboard and glue it on to the front, and this should be vertical. With a fine tip paintbrush, I'm putting on bolt marks on the metal. Try to make them look as round as possible. The single tree unit, glue that on, leaving just enough room there to allow motion of, mo motion of movement. And I'm probably putting it a little closer than in a real cart, but that's for looks and for the model. For the circle bar, take a piece of the thin, or the small square balsa wood piece and spray it with ammonia or window cleaner. Soak it well and let it sit for about five to 10 minutes. Once it's soaked for a while, carefully bend it to the shape shown in the pattern. Now, I find if I squeeze it, I get the shape. Take your time or it will break. Right now, it's so mushy and easy to work with. Again, rolling it over a can also helps with the shaping process. While it's still wet, cut the ends off so that it's gonna sit evenly on this side and this side of the cart and cut that. Then again, while it's still wet, give it a stain. While this is still flexible, I'm going to mark the center of the back. And that glues to the single tree support, the piece below the single tree, right where the bolt is. And glue a little bit of that on there. And then we're gonna bend this, what's left of it, and glue that on top of the shafts. Now, when you're working with this piece, you can still work it some more. This is like working with paper until you get a nice round shape that you're gonna be able to use when you're gluing it onto the cart. So 
So I've applied glue about half an inch or a little more in the center. And I'm gonna glue that on like that. Let that dry and then bend these pieces and glue them. Again, this piece is still a bit damp from the uh, Windex. Once this section is dry, I'm now gonna bend that, curve it as well as I can and glue it to the shafts. And we're gonna use some weight to help that set. Now that I've got this on there, I'm gonna hold that for a while until it dries enough that I can let go. Thinning a little piece of leather lace with some sandpaper. Then I'm gonna cut it to approximately 50 millimeters. With that, I'm gonna take this section of the shaft and wrap this around, and this will help hold the harness in place. You just glue it underneath and do that on both sides. For the axle, take a piece of three millimeter outside diameter brass rod and cut it to 180 millimeters. You may want to do it slightly different with your model, but mine's for mine, it was 180 millimeters. I've wedged up the cart using three millimeter pieces of wood or paper or whatever to try to get a horizontal line across through here height approximately there on the model, make sure everything's on a line surface, flat surface, and get them into position. Once they're in the position, we're going to determine where the wheels go. Now, this is not how you would do it in real life. The wheels would be fitting the model. However, we're going to fudge our way through this to make sure we fit the model. Taking the wheel, I'm going to thread it through the axle rod and thread that through the cart and attach the wheel on the other side. Now first, we're gonna determine if that's where we want the wheels. Using a piece of the wood, leftover wood that I use for the shafts, what I wanna do is cut a piece that's gonna go from the floor to underneath the shaft. So the shaft will sit on that to keep it at the right height cut and sand two of those so that they neatly fit underneath that shaft. It may take a little tweaking and sanding. We'll cut two pieces like that. As you can tell, this is a workaround to how they would do it in real life, but this is what we're gonna use so that we can control the height of the cart. Once you've got these two pieces around the right height, you're gonna paint those to match the rest of your metal. Glue these two pieces at the front of the bottom section, like that. Take a piece of five millimeter outside diameter brass rod. You want it the size to go from the outside of this stand to the other. So it will be marked from here, the outside, to here on the outside. And carefully cut that to make sure that that doesn't cave in. Since I used a pretty rough tool, just a basic wire cutter to do that, mine did cave in a little, so I'm just gonna carefully squeeze that back out. And then make sure my three millimeter axle fits through there properly. I did a second ago. And you may have to just sand off the end or just fix the end and make sure that is gonna go right the way through. One way to make sure if there's a little burr, you just put that in and bend it backwards a little, and then it'll find it much easier to slide that through. Once you're sure that's sliding through, take this piece you just cut and paint it to match your metal. For me, it was black. Once the axle holder is dry, push the axle through so it's even on both sides. I have approximately 35 millimeters on both sides of that. Then I'm gonna take my buggy or cart and I am gonna glue this on in the center of the stands I've made for the axles. So it's gonna sit just like that, glued on both sides of those holders. For 
the leaf spring, follow the pattern, and you want to start just this side, and you're going to bend as best as you can in this leaf spring shape. So using both your hands and a tool, bend it to this shape in the pattern. Bends very good just with this little tool right here. Once you've got it here, cut it at the center. We've got our spring set up. Once you've got it where it holds itself in that position, apply a little glue between here and a brace to let that dry for a few minutes. Make two of those. Once those are both dry, paint them black or whatever your metal color is. Take your leaf spring and if you have to push it down a little so that there's space, you want it to sit on top of the axle piece with enough room here. And then taking the extra piece of this uh, brass, we're going to bend it. It's shown in the pattern so that it's gonna attach. It's gonna attach on top of there and then bend at the edges out. So that it's gonna glue on top like this, underneath like this, and the spring could be squished so that it sits like that. Once you've got it the way you want it, trim off the ends about there, and then paint that the same color as the spring. Once this is dry, you want to glue this on directly above the axle. Let that dry. Apply some glue to the top of the axle holder and the bottom of this piece. And then holding your spring, compress it and place it inside to glue it on there. Make sure it's straight and this piece is properly applied. And then let that dry. I haven't applied the glue yet, but that's how you do it. So the glue there and there, compress and then let it sit. As this can be a bit squirmy, it's probably a good idea to hold it for a minute while it sets and let it, let it dry for overnight before doing anything else. With the balsa wood that you used for the shafts, cut two half inch pieces. With a three millimeter drill, drill down the center. Right here. Paint these the same color as the metal. Sand that a little bit, but leave one side end unpainted. To glue the wheel on, add this piece with glue onto the shaft or the axle, and then to glue the wheel on top, gluing this to the wheel. So the part that is not painted to the wheel, that'll keep your wheel from wobbling. So you want glue on this on the inside and glue here. And then let that dry. For the fenders, we're going to use some large craft sticks or popsicle sticks. These are the regular popsicle sticks. These are like the tongue depressors. And these are one inch wide by about seven and three quarters of an inch width. You can use these, but I prefer the longer, wider ones. So what we're going to do with these is first just cut off the ends on both sides. And then with sandpaper, just round the edges for neatness. We only need two, but I would suggest probably doing four of them just in case you break one or two. I have prepared four pieces with just a little round on mine, but you can do as much as you want. And then make sure that the sides are sanded or the ends are sanded so there's no roughness. At that point, we're gonna take them and drop them into boiling water leave them for 30 minutes. Find something round, some sort of can, with the approximate diameter of the wheel. So I'm going to use this can for bending. Once your sticks have finished cooking, 
carefully remove them with some tongs. Make sure you don't burn yourself. And taking them over to your shape, use your fingers first to bend the wood. It actually bends a lot easier than you would think. Don't overdo it too fast or you may break it. And then on one side, you wanna turn up the end because there's a bit of a flip at the back where it straightens out. And you can roll it around over your piece as well, over your uh, curved surface. And then just keep working it until you have it approximately the shape you need it. After bending it with your fingers, you can then wedge it with something heavy Let's see, heavy weights on my can first. And then with two weights or something heavy, put it into shape. Leaving that last little piece sticking out. And then do the second one the same way. I'm gonna put the second one right on top. To work the end, I also find pressing it down like that helped give it a bit of shape. A little bit of wedging creativity to make sure everything is even. We'll help you out. Just different weights or whatever you can find, cans, so that this is up tight to the can, this sticks out, and these sides are even. So I have a little more wedging and weights to go still. And then this must dry for at least 24 hours until it's completely dry. Here is the final setup I ended up using to get it wedged in tight enough in the way that I liked it. So you can see out here, this piece still sticks around and this part is tighter up against the edge. And the wall is helping weight it and then leave it 24 hours. That wrap is also another way to brace this piece for the fender around a can. When I've taken the wood off the mold, it has dried. It took just over 24 hours, and I'm going to now stain those. For the brackets, take another piece of quarter inch brass strip and cut it into four pieces. Each piece will be approximately three inches long. Take these and shape them as shown in the pattern. And once that's done, take all four and paint them the color of your metal, which in my case is black. With glue or sandpaper, just remove a little bit of the paint from the edge of these brackets. Glue on the brackets. The first one needs to be right at the very back so that the seat can open. The other one is approximately three quarters of an inch from the back. And let that dry fully. An important note when using fenders is you have three choices. Either leave the fenders off completely and then you can have your hinge seat. You can glue on the fenders, but then your seat won't hinge. Or you can sticky wax on your, on your fenders and then you can take them off if you want to use the hinged option. So it's up to you. Another option is to adjust how these are bent so that you can have this placed either higher, I mean, sorry, lower or in different locations and attach your fenders accordingly.